This is a 2018 Chrysler 300S. And today we'll be going over all the quirks and features of this beautiful Chrysler product. Now first, let me tell you about our website called Cars and that's not right, fbuddyfutures.com. This is Jacob's website and has new parts for our older vehicles. The biggest hit on his website is the HVAC knob kit. This includes four knobs to bring the interior of your car up to modern times. Three for the HVAC plus one for your headlights. Additionally, we get tons and tons of questions about how you can build your own supercharged Firebird. FBodyFutures.com has a detailed parts list and description on how to do so yourself. Now, no review of the Chrysler 300 is going to be complete without mentioning the grill. Now, the grill is massive. At least it was for its time. So prior to the grills that we see now in Escalades, Genesis, almost every vehicle has a humongous grill. But when this car first came out in this rendition, it was, I won't say criticized, but it was almost mocked for the size of the grill. This grill is actually 30% larger than the previous generation. And of course, on each side of the grill, we have the headlights. Now these headlights were one of the first two that incorporated LEDs for accent lighting. Additionally, it has steering adjusted lighting, which is fantastic for its time and age. And finally, the fog lights. Now these fog lights are a little bit special for this edition. This 300S has the sports appearance model, which has LED uh, accent lighting and a nice sporty looking fog light. However, on most models, you have quad fog lights, two on each side. And let me tell you, the spread is enormous. One of the fog lights actually shoots out nearly 90 degrees from the car, very perpendicular, and your peripheral vision is very well illuminated. So I come from a time and age where 16 inch wheels, 17 inch wheels were large. And around the 2000s, uh, late 2010s, that started to change rather rapidly where you'd see 18s, 19s, even 20 inch wheels on cars or larger, even much, much larger on trucks. The Chrysler 300S, this one's sporting 20 inch wheels. Fun fact, if you wanna know the difference between an all wheel drive and a rear wheel drive vehicle at first glance, Take a look at the wheels. 19 versus 20. 19 on the R wheel drive, 20 on the rear wheel drive. Another first force time, our Fender incorporated side marker lamps. So this is not something you saw too often at all. It used to just be an actual marker stamped it to the side or maybe on the side of the tail light. Well, this new sleek design came out. Chrysler was one of the first to implement it. And really, there's a lot to talk about when it comes to the Chrysler 300's exterior looks. Overall, it's a pretty well blend, a pretty nice blend of both modern and past times. It's got a very long hood, it's nice and wedge shaped, short deck lid at the back. Pretty sporty looking for what is really essentially an everyday sedan. If we take our attention to the rear, one of the first things that you'll notice, especially at night, is the halo on the tail lights. So uh, this is also another first uh, that we saw was a nice, I'll have to say halo or a silhouette of the tail lights uh, that were constantly on. The actual brake lights when you hit them were the interior pieces. A nice bright tail light, very handsome, and something you could easily distinguish when going down the road. Now just how bright are those tail lights? Well, they're so bright that when you hit the brakes, you can see the reflection behind you. It's bouncing off the vehicles behind you. And it's even bouncing off street signs behind you. Another thing that's finally incorporated in the Chrysler is a side marker on the rear view mirrors or the side mirrors. Nice and well illuminated. So that way you get uh, a full direction of signal indication. Now, can you even review a Chrysler 300 without drawing the comparisons to how it looks with a Bentley? That's been around for a while. When this first came out in 2005, they grew great acclaim. Uh, some guy named James David Power III, I think, even said it was the best vehicle, best new vehicle in the country. That's a pretty strong accolade. 
Here's the thing though. Do you guys remember what the old Bentleys look like? Take a look at the 2003 and older Bentleys. They're hideous. They look nothing like this. It's an absolutely disgusting looking car, in my humble opinion. Now the 2004 revision and beyond, very handsome. I can see how it looks very similar. But are you gonna tell me that the engineering and um, aesthetic team at Chrysler was able to whip this up in less than a year after the new Continental came out? I'm not seeing it. In fact, what you really need to be doing is drawing a comparison to Mercedes because this is what it is based off of. E-Series in the front, S-Series in the rear. I might have that backwards, but who really cares? It's not a Bentley platform, it's Mercedes. Another fun thing about this vehicle, how wide the doors open. Now you might get this 45 degree angle out of a lot of vehicles, but with the 300, it goes even further. Almost 90 degrees out, opening this door. Plenty of room for egress and entrance. I guess the only real bad thing about it is once you're in the vehicle, you really do got to lean out to grab the door. And now we're inside. I think you'll notice immediately that the acoustics are much better than outside. This cabin really keeps exterior noise to a minimum. While you're in the vehicle, it's probably good to notice there are a number of creature comforts uh, that this vehicle is equipped with and some even more greater comforts that come on highly equipped models. So starting when you first come in, it's nice to notice there are actually multiple presets for your seat and radio based on the driver and which key you actually have in your pocket. Additionally, this model comes with the Beats radio. There's not a whole lot, I'll say, that comes with that other than a 10 inch subwoofer in the rear. But it's still nice to have and kind of lets me relive my high school glory days, I'll say. Um, really listening to Lip Biscuit, Corn, and Rage Against the Machine at the loudest possible volume. Additionally, this model both has both heated and vented seats along with a rear sunshade and heated steering wheel. In the rear, heated seats only, but at the same time, how much do you want your kids to have the utmost luxury. Now what use does this rear sunshade have? Not a lot in my opinion. A, I guess it can reduce, reduce a little bit of glare for your kids when they're back there playing video games, but I have found it most helpful, and this is based off of a suggestion from a viewer. I put it up at night if I have somebody with their high beams on, or uh, you know, maybe HID bulbs and a regular lens. Fun fact, if you have this up and you put the car into reverse, it automatically lowers the sunshade. Now a couple of features that this vehicle does not have that a previous vehicle of mine did, previous Chrysler 300 did, was adaptive cruise control and lane assist. You can easily tell by these blanked out buttons on the steering wheel, and there would also be additional buttons over here where I have I say traction control, turning your sport package on, or parking assist. But you have your adaptive cruise control. You could increase or decrease the distance in which you're following. And your lane assist was automatic as well. And that would keep you within the white or yellow lines and would actually auto correct a bit whenever you started to drift. Other things to note is this does have a home link garage door opener. And even the driver, all right, has a nice mirror and lighting. Mainly use it to make sure nothing's in my teeth. Ah, driving the 300. One of the first things you should take into consideration is that you're experiencing the luxury of a Mercedes Benz. Albeit a Mercedes-Benz that was designed in 2005 and manufactured in 2018, but a poor man's Benz nonetheless. You know, I'd like to redact that. I'll say a frugal man's Mercedes. And it's not only a Mercedes, it's also a Maserati. Take a look at the interior. It has the exact same seats, dash, infotainment center, door cards and panels. There's a lot to offer in the 300. Overall ride quality, 
very nice, um, exactly as you expect with components from an E-Class, e an S-Class, or Series, or whatever they're called. Those German fellers, I never know. Ah, got an SS here, possibly wanting to mess around. Probably not. This does have the Hemi, so I'd be able to give them a run, I think, but those have a 6.2. It was fun enough. Anyways, back to the actual 300. Uh, the ride, ride quality, quite nice. Uh, with the underpinnings of an S class and an E class. Uh, overall suspension, very, very good. The ride's not too harsh. There's not a lot of body rolls, so you can, I'll say, dive it into the corners. Uh, at least as much as you would any Mopar product, barring, of course, the Viper. Uh, the steering, overall very good. There are sport and comfort settings that uh, change the degree and quickness of, of, of the, that change the, the, that change the degree and quickness of the steering. Uh, seats, very, very comfortable again. Uh, same thing that you would see in a Maserati. Uh, multiple adjustments, heated, cooled. Speaking of heated, so are as the steering wheel. Very, very nice in winter mornings. Uh, along with the back seats. Uh, kids absolutely love that. Infotainment center is quite nice. You get a lot of physical buttons for the HVAC and the radio. However, you know, presets, things along those lines. Uh, navigation are part of... Sorry, just cut people off. Whenever I see people cross that double, I try to screw with them. I've got to cut that. I don't want that to be known. <clears throat> Anyways, multiple vehicles that can come with navigation overall works very well, as long as so does the radio. Uh, the dash is quite nice, a pretty large digital screen, multiple uh, layouts that you can choose from. Uh, seats, of course, and door panel, fantastic. Now this particular vehicle does not have the large panoramic sunroof. I love and hate that, okay? It is awesome whenever, you, you know, sunny day, you can either have it open or just have the shade back and the whole roof is glass. Absolutely love it. However, uh, that comes at a price and that price is a little bit of uh, rattling. Now there are bumpers that you can change out and move around. And that will quiet that down, but typically that only lasts for uh, a number of months before you get a little bit of chatter once again. Uh, climate control, very, very nice. Uh, currently have this set on uh, the automatic uh, mode at uh, 69 degrees. Keeping myself uh, nice and cool along with the cooled seats blowing air. Uh, on your back and backs and bottom side, uh, which is quite nice, especially for long hauls. This particular model does not have automatic wipers, although that is an option, as are automatic high beams. Throttle response is an area of, for improvement, I'll say with this vehicle, even with the Hemi. Um, I don't know if it's some sort of active torque management or what, but if you put the throttle down, it takes quite a while for you to actually feel the power of that Hemi surging. Um, I think what it is, since it's an electronic uh, throttle control, is that you might hit the throttle quickly, but the butterfly just slowly opens to full throttle. Again, a torque management probably to prolong the life of uh, you know, transmission, engine, rear end, uh, various components. I would recommend a inexpensive pedal controller, uh, something you can buy off the jungle site. I think they were on $50 when I got mine, but they help out the feel of the vehicle quite a bit. Do they make it faster? Do they add horsepower? Absolutely not. Actually, I'll take it back. They might, in fact, make it quicker because you are getting a quicker throttle response, so you can get to full throttle quicker. It just makes the car feel more like the V8 version that I would have in my head versus a V6 version. 
Speaking of the Pentastar V6, fantastic engine. I had that in my 300 prior to this one. It had plenty of power, got up out of its way uh, as quick, if not a little bit quicker than a lot of other vehicles on the road. So it was fantastic and absolutely sipped on fuel. Uh, the Hemi though, it is quite nice. It is much quicker than a lot of things on the road. Of course there are quicker cars. No one is just claiming that. But in terms of getting up and out of, a, out of the way of itself, it does a very fine job. Uh, worth mentioning, this also has uh, active uh, multi-displacement mode or, you know, a, a Chevy guy, we call it displacement on demand. So what that means is it will switch from a cylinder mode now to a four cylinder mode. It does so quite seamlessly. The 300 does come equipped with sport mode. Uh, not only for the transmission, but also a button on the dash. What's that do exactly? Well, the dash is the override for everything. If you hit sport on the dash, it puts the transmission in sport, it puts steering in sport mode, and I think that's about it. Um, in sport mode, the paddle shifters will hold the gear, which is fantastic. I don't really recommend the paddle shifters. Paddle shifters. Overall, they're quite small. They turn with the wheel, so if you have the wheel, if you're in the middle of a corner, not that you should be shifting in the middle of a turn uh, in a sport type scenario, but it happens. It's just opposite, right? They don't stay mounted with the column. The 300 also has an electronic differential, limited slip differential. So it can do burnouts, two wheel burnouts. Regardless though, if you do have you do have traction control uh, once you get the wheel speed up it does start to slow you down and even with traction control off uh, it doesn't really let you hang the rear out too much both wheels will spin the car will start to shift but it has some sort of yaw control where um, once you get past a certain degree of fun I'll say it brings you back into uh, tracking straight it'd be nice if you could completely disable that but it's a car for the masses, I understand. There's gotta be safety for it. Traction control does work really well. Um, I've not had any issues where I've become stuck on ice, anything along those lines. It, uh, for a two wheel drive car, I would not have any issues driving this in winter climates. And I haven't. Um, here, in, I'm, I'm in Indianapolis, uh, the west side of Indianapolis there, and we get a decent amount of snow far every year. Sometimes six, seven, eight, nine inches, um, depending on your measuring stick. But it handles just fine in there. It doesn't really push the snow too bad. Um, obviously, slow down. But traction control works very well in the winter. I imagine an all-wheel drive option works extremely well in snow. I'll see you right there. You can hear traction control, take the fun out of things, and then let me get the tail out. Rough railroad track crossing, no problem, soaks it right up. Now the Hemi does have over 360 horsepower, pretty significant. So it can get you from zero to 60 in 5.8 seconds, and it will do that extremely reliably and consistently. And of course, for passing speeds and acceleration. That heavy works just fine. Oh, 55 miles per hour. It's amazing how quick that comes up on you. The 300 only comes with the eight-speed automatic. And to tell you the truth, I don't know if I'd want a manual, even if they offered it. It's a luxury vehicle, semi-luxury vehicle, so sue me. But I don't want to row my own gears in this. I just want to sit back and have easy cruising. And to tell you the truth, that A-speed really works well. Uh, gearing is fantastic. You get the best of both worlds when it comes to acceleration and great fuel economy. Uh, the transmission doesn't hunt or anything like that. I mean, it finds a gear and knows exactly where to be at. I, overall, big fan of the automatic version of this vehicle. I don't know why I said version. It's the only configuration it comes in. Visibility on the 300 is actually fantastic. Completely surrounded by glass. Even with a high deck lid, able to see pretty easily out the back. Rear view mirrors, nice and large. 
side mirrors, nice and large. Additionally, a fun feature and quirk, you could say, is if you put the vehicle in reverse, you have the mirrors actually flip down. I find that extremely useful when backing into parking spaces. You can see the white lines real easily and just line up perfectly. As you can tell, it's actually raining right now. Not too loud in the vehicle. Obviously you hear noise from the rain hitting the windshield, but there's no roof noise, anything along those lines. And finally, it's time to give this a Benji score. Overall, as a weekend driver, it's pretty good. As a daily driver, it's also pretty good. Better cars, there are worse cars. However, Doug hasn't made one of these videos yet. I thought it might be fun to beat him out to it. So, until next time, stay safe, show him your taillights.